Hello, my name is Dan McDougall, and I'm the author of Gate1, a web-based terminal emulator and SSH client built with HTML5 technologies. Before I get started with my demo, let me state that Gate1 was written entirely from scratch by yours truly and uses no third-party JavaScript libraries. The page you see here is 100% pure HTML, JavaScript, and CSS. No browser plugins were used in the making of this web app. Also, since I know people will undoubtedly ask, the entirety of this client-side download amounts to about 44k. That includes the icons you see on the right, which are actually inline SVG. Now, onto the demonstration. The first thing I'd like to show you is that while Gate1 is an excellent SSH client, it can actually run any terminal application you so desire. As a demonstration of this, I've started up Gate1 instance running NetHack. As you can see, the possibilities are endless. Now, back to Gate1 as an SSH client. First step, I'd like to show you how it works, generally speaking. When you open gate 1, you'll see a prompt like this. You can enter a connection settings one at a time by answering the prompts or by entering an SSH URL like so. Another way you can open SSH connections is via the Bookmarks Manager. When you click on a bookmark, it is smart enough to know if you are already connected to a host and will automatically open a new terminal before connecting, so it won't clobber your existing terminal. Git1's Bookmark Manager is actually quite interesting in that it can store regular HTTP URLs in addition to SSH URLs, so if you wanted to, you could use it as your personal client-side replacement for Delicious. Now to open a few terminals, it's a good time to talk about the grid functionality of Gate1. Every terminal that you open gets laid out in a grid that allows you to quickly switch between running terminals via via keyboard shortcuts, or by opening the grid view like this. Also, whenever you open a new terminal, it gets a unique number assigned to it, so you can tell them apart, even if both terminals are connected to the same host. What if you want to rename a terminal? You can just you can do this by opening the terminal info panel by clicking on the magnifying glass icon, then clicking on the title. Speaking of the terminal info panel, here you can see how long a given terminal has been connected, how big it is, and turn monitoring for activity or inactivity on or off. This is quite handy if you need to keep a session open and know if something's changed. Also at the top are two buttons for viewing the Gate1 client-side log and a recording of your session, just in case you want to save it for later. Let's look at the log to see what that's like. Pretty basic. Every command you run gets stored up here to the size configured in the settings panel. I'll get more into that later. It's useful because the log is much larger than the scrollback buffer. Another interesting feature of the log is that it doesn't record the output of full screen applications. For example, things like top, which you can see the tail end of it here, or VI. If you've ever had to review a terminal output log where someone ran a full screen application, you'll know that such logs are nearly indecipherable. So I've made an intentional decision to keep things like that out of the log. But what if you really need to capture the output of such full screen applications? That's where the session recording feature comes in. When you click on the View Session Recording button, it will open up a new terminal window with a frame-by-frame -frame recording of your terminal session. What's really cool about this is that it c you can save this recording as a file and share it. Everything needed to play back the recording is kept within the page itself. So just save it to a flash drive or send it in an email. It's that easy. Now let's talk about the Preferences panel. Here you can select the CSS color scheme. and decide how big you want the various buffers to be. Also, if you know you're going to be working with applications that need a particular number of rows and columns, you can set that here as well. And that pretty much concludes this demo. 
Note that what you've seen in this video is only a high-level overview of Gate 1's basic functionality. There's a lot more hidden underneath the covers, as it were, especially for folks that are interested in embedding Gate 1 into other applications. If you're interested in Gate 1 as a user, a developer, or a potential investor, please feel free to leave a comment or email me at youknowwho at youknowwhat.com. Yes, that's my real email address. Thank you for your time.